Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today I want to use this item of clothing. I got it from Asda's. They reduce and reduce their clothing when nobody wants it anymore. They sell it for £1. Well, that's a very good way of buying this amount of fabric. And also it's got lots of little bits and pieces we can use. So that saves us a lot of time. Right, what can we make? No time for chatting. Let's get on with crafting. First thing I'm going to do is cut off the yoke of this dress, leaving the frill intact. I'm coming up quite tight to the frill because I'm going to be trying to use as many bits of this as I can. So anything I can salvage and keep in as big pieces as possible, I will do. And we've got this. Now what am I going to do with that? I've got this piece of fabric. Now you can use drop cloth. This is actually a curtain lining of a velvet curtain I got. And it did have some watermarks on it from condensation off the window. I washed it, it came up beautifully. Now I've torn this to size. I didn't want to cut it. You can hem it if you want to. I like these raggedy edges because we're going for country farmhouse style. I just pull any loose bits off and if they fray even more, all the better. And if you want even more frilling, get your pokey thing. Just do this one or two threads at a time, otherwise it will drive you nuts because it'll keep getting stuck. And just, if I show you there, I don't know if you can see, poke it between just two threads and then it gives it a start. And if it starts to get a bit tight and it snaps, don't worry, straighten it out and it'll come off again. Use your pokey thing if you can't find the end. And there you go. I'm not going to overdo that. I don't want it overly tatty, but I just want a little bit of tattiness. And now I'm going to put a ruffle on the ends. So let's open this up. And I'm going to need two ruffles, one for each end. I'm going to be really tight on frill. If you're making a frill or if you've got more frill, you don't have to do this. But I'm going with this very small blouse. There's not a lot of it. So I'm going to have to adapt what I've got to fit it. So now I'm going to trim in just a little bit away from the frill at the top. I want enough there to sew this into place. Or if you want to, you can glue it into place. You can always re-trim this later. It just gets the biggest bulk out of the way. But don't throw any of this away because it is amazing what you can make with little bits of fabric. Even tiny bits, an inch square, you can either use in a scrappy quilt or, I love making those, or you can use them in journaling. Cut down the edges and salvage those too. Why not? Oh, now I'm going to have plenty. Now, you can either hot glue them, as I say, or you can sew them on. I think I'm going to get my sewing machine out and sew them on. No, I'm not. I've got pink cotton in my sewing machine. I don't want to change it, change the bobbin. I'm going to glue it. I'm going to cut this roughly to size because I don't want to have to try and work with all this dangling down the end. And in theory, we've got virtually the same both ends. Yep, so we're going to be fine. Now, because I'm gluing it, I'm going to cut it a little bit closer. Are you like me? Do you make decisions on how convenient things are? I'm always short on time, so I don't like to spend too much time doing things that I can find a quicker way around. So now using some hot glue, I'm going to come right the way along the edge. I'm just doing small sections at a time because this was actually sewn curved. If I'm not careful, it'll end up running itself curvy and I'll have a curvy end, which I don't want. So by doing it bit by bit, I can make the curve do what I want it to, which is go straight. going to neaten up that little end there. I like the fact that it sticks out sideways so I'm going to do this one sticking out sideways too. Check it's stuck all the way and then do the same on the other end.
Now take some strips of fabric that you've torn. I use these that I tore off the side and I've made two little tulip bows. Fold your fabric in half so that you know where the middle is, a blob of glue and pop on your little bow. And then the same on the other side. Now I could put a little pearl or something on there or put some extra lace or something but I think that is lovely. I'm going to decide how long I want these tails. Oh I like them hanging longer. If I fold them up. Hmm, they're okay that length. What should I do? What should I do? I'm going to trim them off to here and I can always change my mind later but I do like the fact that they're hanging below the edge of the frill. I like that. And how easy was that? So if you're ever out and you see a frilly blouse for sale in a thrift store or you've got one and you're not using it anymore, don't go tearing them off your friends so that you could use them. That's not polite. And then you can make yourself one of these and it's a gorgeous table runner. I'm going to put this up on my little display and we'll see what it looks like. this craft I've got I've still got plenty of fabric left, so I'm going to see which part I need to use to get the whole cow on one piece. Oh, look at that. It's a shame. Try it that way. See if that helps. No, that makes it worse. So I'm going to have to use this big part on the back. And I want to make the most of this, so I'm going to put that there. So I'm utilising this bit up the top. Hmm there because I'm going to want to fold around this cow when he's glued on. I'll be doing him that way and for this I'm going to use glue stick. Put plenty on. Make sure we get right to the edges. You can use hot glue for this but I find it makes the fabric very bumpy and we're going to be sealing the other side with hot glue, so it'll be fine. Pop him in place. Turn him over. Make sure there are no ripples. And then cut around, leaving a good seam all the way around the edges. You don't have to be too fussy about this bit. Which is good, because I'm not a terribly accurate person. Now you may decide that you're going to print off one of these, cut it out and leave the cow's face showing. I just wanted to show off this fabric and I like the idea of it just being a silhouette. Let me know in the comments if you were doing this, what would you do? Would you keep the cow's face or would you go for the silhouette? Ooh, that's very tight there. We make it, we're fine. And like that. Now wherever there's a tight corner, you are going to need to snip pretty much into the tight corner. And we'll trim extra bits off as we need to. Now out with the hot glue and start folding your fabric over. And then when you've already started and burnt your finger, remember you need to put your finger protectors on. And 
and there's my cow. We're going to set this to one side and bring out a reed. I've cut myself a pile of strips of fabric in the same fabric as I've used for the base for my little table runner because I'd like everything I make today to coordinate a little bit. But you can make it in whatever you like. If you've got an adult size blouse or shirt, you could probably do the whole thing with that. But just be careful. You may run out. So now we just need to start wrapping this wreath. You've got two options here. You can cut these a little bit thicker and then just wrap round and round and you get that effect. But I'm going to do a little bit of something interesting. Sorry about the clattering. I'm going to go around and into the middle one and then around the top and into the middle one. And this is much more fiddly when it's long. It gets easier the shorter the piece of fabric gets. And into the bottom. And around the bottom and into the middle one. So you're just alternating. And get to the first connecting bar. And when you get there, have a look and see if you like it. Now that's that pattern. But then you can also scrunch it up a bit and add a bit of depth. Like that. Now I'm going to scrunch mine up a bit. So to get that with the amount of texture I like, and I love all these little end bits, but you can chop them off if you want to, then I'm doing six complete up and down wraps. So now I know exactly how many to do for the rest of the wreath so that it's quite even. And then just carry on around and around, and every time you run out of fabric, join another piece in. And if it's easier for you, you can always cut these strips of fabric a lot shorter because you will have more joins, but you won't see the joins if you do it properly. And it'll just see if you get near the tangle. Now take your hoop, make sure you're happy with the spacing your cow and put the head where you want it to be so you can either go low there and then you could put a bow on the top or you can go dead central like that i'm thinking of going up the top there and putting a bow on that looks like the bow is on his head what do you think now i've got a bow here so let's try this out i've got this shabby bow i made last year i can't remember what this was on so if we pop the cow in place and put the bow on the cow's head, this is a very big bow, I probably won't use this one, then it looks like that. If we put the bow at the top, hanging down, and then put the cow lower, looks like that. Or we can put the cow at an angle, or we can put the cow on and put the bow to the side. It all depends what sort of look you're going for. So I think I'm going to put the cow low, but I'm going to put a little decoration on the cow's head. I've got a few things here and I've got some lovely little florals. I don't want to overdo it really. I think that, depending on your mood, I love this on lots of things, this level of flamboyancy, but not for this. I think this needs to be a little more simple. So first thing we'll do is get some of this lamb's ear out. Several bits of that. Oh, good bit of eucalyptus. Let's pull it all out, all the bits that look good, and we'll work from there these oh there i think on the one side i think it'd look better some blue one this bit of lace so I'm going to tie a knot in it add a little bit of hot glue and poke it right up under the flower like that it's hanging down there oh I love that I still can't decide where I'm going to put my cow hmm there I think at a jaunty angle so see where the cow is touching Nice wood of hot glue under each point. You don't want it falling off and landing on somebody's head. Cow on the head isn't good when you've got your friends calling around. 
going to use more of this cream fabric tie a knot pull it really tight decide where i want the top the big decision am i going for a jaunty angle yes i am so turn it over pop some hot glue on pop your knot in place burn your finger pop your finger protector on and give it a good push and trim the ends Hmm, I think if I add some of this purple down the bottom. Oh, no, that makes a huge difference. I like that. And we put this there, shall we? Or there, not there. A little bit of hot glue. Walk it right under. Like that. And now I'm going to use the same on the top. Yes, I like that. Oh, definitely the right decision, I think. We've got a jaunty angle on the cow and we got some extra florals at the top. What would you have done? Let me know in the comments if you wouldn't mind. That would be great. I'd love to know your thoughts on my crafts. So let's go see what this looks like up on the display. enjoying this so far and there's more to come then why not give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because that way you'll get to see all the other crafts and strange things we do throughout the year right no time for chatting back to crafting for this craft i'm going to use this dress form i've used it for various things over the years it's good fun i'm going to make something really simple for this I've got this little bit of ruffle left, so I'm going to make some apron strings for this if you're going to become an apron. So I've got the hem here, I'm going to snip that really close to the hem and hopefully it'll turn straight line. No, it didn't. <laughs> it went a bit wonky and has taken the bottom off, so that doesn't matter because now we'll just snip up a little bit further. Whenever you do this, just allow for the fact that you do lose a little bit of width when you tear, unless you're going to iron it. Do you think I'm going to iron it? Correct, I'm not. <laughs> Using hot glue, I'm just going to pop a bit of the end of it onto there, and the same with the other end. There. Now I'm going to run it a line of hot glue over there and pop this around the waist and it down of my little dress form like that turn it around and tie the apron up these bits get everywhere and if you've got any hot glue on your fingers it sticks to you so now we've got this and we need to stick something on the top and i thought a sharpie bow so we'll use this little bit we tore off went wrong and let's see if i got any other bits no so i'll snip a few more bits and i've got the selvage from this curtain so i'll use some of that and any little snippets and bits and pieces i got around the place but this that i tried fraying but it's not long enough and i'll pop some of that lace in and a bit of ribbon so we just randomly cross them around the middle and tighten it when you're tightening it pull and tighten shake it about oh yes i love this 
especially as you can see a lot of the frayed bits are showing through now. Hmm, the ribbons on that side. So which side am I going to go for? Is that side? Or oh, that side? I think I'm going to go for that side. And you may decide to alter things around and stick them where they want them. So I'm going for that. And now I'm going to pop this around the neck of my dress form. And continuing in our theme, we're going to put exactly the same leaves and flowers on this one. And then we have a shabby chic country kitchen lady ready to do some baking for a special occasion. Oh, let's see what this looks like up on the display. We've got some fabric and we've got some fur fabric. Cut myself a straight edge down there. Make sure I've got enough to wrap right around the tin. Take the button band off and then wrap the tin with the gingham. line of hot glue every inch or so and that'll get the fabric to stick to your tin. I don't like using hot glue with fabric but there are times when only hot glue will do and if you're sticking it to tin really I think it's the best job. I'm going to trim around the bottom and then poke all the excess into the top. You may find this is heavy enough. If you don't think it is and you want to use it as a doorstop or you just want to be sure it doesn't fall over, then you can always just put some rocks or something like that, some sand in the bottom. Next thing we need to do is cut out a beard. So decide how long your beard's going to be, how wide and then how long. So I'm going to cut down there. If you cut the back of the fabric rather than the fur, you haven't got to worry too much. But if you do it like that, you don't chop all the fur off the front and end up with baldy bits. Here it is quite important to stick near the fabric, otherwise you'll cut his beard short. See, by doing it by the fabric, I've got all that left on. So now I'm going to curve the bottom of the beard. So I'm going to use a pencil and draw the same both sides. Well, in theory, it's only roughly to cut near the fabric. And check if you're happy with that. Yep, I am happy with that. Now, I think it's a bit long, isn't it? So I'm going to take some off the top rather than off the bottom. Because then I can use that in the future as a little moustache. And then glue that into position near the top. I like that beard. Now I'm going to take the sleeve and I'm going to make a hat out of this sleeve. This end is already finished, which is brilliant. So I'm going to pop this on like that and then just pop a little bit of glue at the top so it just doesn't keep popping off. Now I'm going to put some stuff in into the hat. If you put anything into the tin to make it a bit more solid you won't have any worry about the stuffing falling straight through to the bottom of the tin. If you put a big enough blob in you'll be fine anyway like that and then I'm going to tie the top with a piece of twine and cut the excess off. Now you can make yourself one of those cone shaped hats and have it coming down with a little bobble on the bottom. But I want mine to look a little bit gonkish, if you see what I mean. <laughs> I think it'll be quite gonkish when we finish. Now we need a nose. You can't have a gnome without a nose. I've got unfinished wooden beads. They are 20 millimetre beads. And I like that look. 
If you don't, you can paint them up in like a skin tone or something. But I like the fact that it's wood. I think it's really going to suit the style of my gnome. Good wood of hot glue. Make sure you're central of his beard, otherwise he'll have a wonky nose. Right up underneath the hat, like that. And then we just need to stick something on the top of his hat. Make it look finished. Now I'm torn. I like a sunflower. I think it looks really cute. But trying to keep everything in colour theme, I really should use more of what I used before. And that looks quite nice. Hmm, what shall I do? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to make a little patch. I've got this fabric that I've tried fraying, so I'm going to cut along there too. Get my porky thing and fray that side quite a lot. I love all this excess fraying. I think it's going to look really cool. Cut the other side, but don't cut that exactly where you want because you still have to do fraying on this side too. Oh, that's a really cute looking patch. So we pop that on his head there, or on his hat, not his head. Oh, my poor glue gun's getting furrier by the minute. Pop that on there at a jaunty angle, because I do like a jaunty angle. And then I think we need a button. And now we can procrastinate no longer, so I'm going to have to make the decision. So are we going for colour coordinating? Yes, I like that. You can poof his hat down if you want to, but I like it like that. Oh, let's see what he looks like. Up on my display. Hello, I'm a gnome. I just remembered to turn my camera on. <laughs> I've already started cutting. So I'll just carry on from where I am. I bought this picture frame from the thrift store. They sell their picture frames two for 50p. It's nothing special, but I just want the frame. And I decided to pick one with a picture I like because I'll keep that. So I'm cutting this off with my knife. Just trying to get that right pressure. It's going to cut it off, but I'm not going to slip and chop my fingers off. I'm quite attached to my fingers. There we go. That'll come in useful another time. Now I'm going to try getting this off. And I think I'm going to use the pliers. Grab it with my pliers. And pull. There we go. Off it comes. Now I decide which is going to be the front. And because this has got a hanger on the back. Then I think we'll keep that as the back. So now I'm going to take my bits of wood. Now I cut these and this one I wanted to show you. I cut it on the generous side and then sand down the end. But this is the one thing you can do. You be over vigorous with your sanding if you're using balsa wood. It's amazing how quickly you wear away your balsa wood. A little bit more. This is a good way of neatening up the end as well. Perfect. And let's check these two side pieces. So that's roughly where they're going. Why won't they balance up? I'm going to mess it all up now anyway because I'm going to take them out to glue. Look, I've got a wet wipe stuck to my glue gun now. A little bit of hot glue. I've got to do both ends at the same time. stain this now you can use wood stain you can use some dark wax so I thought I'd show you another way which is with a little bit of watercolor hardly any bit of water mix it up 
stir it up and then paint it on your wood. And this is a really economical way of doing this because it can cost quite a lot to buy these wa coloured waxes and things like that. If you're going to buy a tub of something, you've got to pay like £10 for the whole tub. Because this is virtually negligible. If you pick up some cheap watercolours in lots of different colour, you can use this on lots of different items. Now the problem I do have is that my inner wood is a little bit lighter than my outer wood. So it's not going to match perfectly, but I think it'll be fine. If you've got a little bit of wood that doesn't seem to be taking the colour, check because you've probably got hot glue on it. When I usually get these, there is no glue. They didn't glue the piece on, they just stapled it on. So this is really frustrating because you can see there, the glue isn't taking the colour. But I'm not going to worry about that, we're going to carry on. Just a quick rub over, take off the excess so it'll dry faster and also I think it just does a nicer job of showing up the grain of the wood. Now turn my piece of wood over on my little window. I'm going to take the other sleeve. I'm going to cut this fairly straight. Straight as you can manage but don't panic. And then measure and you want this to touch the top and the bottom. So about there. Or you can measure it with your tape measure or your ruler. I don't think I, you can see what I'm doing, can you? I keep forgetting and wandering off screen. There we go. Cut up there and cut up the other side. So we've got two identical pieces. Now come in where you want your curtains to start. I'm standing up to do this, so my voice may sound a little bit different. There, and then I'm going to get my nail gun Put it in place, press it down, and shoot that in there. Then I'm going to put a few little tucks along the top. If you are going to be using one of these electronic guns, make sure your fingers are right out the way before you do anything. You don't want to staple yourself to the frame. And work your way along. Tuck in all the way. Check the front, yep, that's looking good. And then I'm going to just cut this seam off. And then staple this down. And then do the same on the other side. And hopefully you let your paint dry before you did this, unlike me, who's got paint all over the fabric. Put a little tie back on these curtains by poking this through underneath between some staples and then lower down below the bar of the window because you want to see it just tie it in a knot not too tight and trim it off now I'm going to make two little two loop bows very small ones pop a little dab of hot glue and put those bows just so you can see them Now I'm going to take my cat and glue him to the bottom of the frame. Plenty of hot glue. And there we've got a cat sat on the window. Now of course we're going to have to put some florals on this. It's compulsory. country charm I'm going to pop some buttons on the corners and as you know it's also to hide <laughs> these little metal bits but it'll look wonderful when we finished but there we go I'm not even going to put a hanger on this I'm going to stand this on my display so let's see what this looks like up on my display I was worried to 
first I wasn't going to have enough fabric but as it is I've got lots of fabric so I can do even more projects but if you're down to some scrappy bits I thought let's have a look what you can make I've got this button I picked this up in a car boot sale I think it was 20p and I like it and it's a very nice sentiment nans are like buttons they hold everything together but I'm going to take that off along with the hanger pop the hanger off up with my finger sander and I'm just going to see if I can take these words off Right, so I've rubbed that down now and I'm going to put a little bit of white wax on that. As you can see, it's already got some on and now I've sanded it, it looks a bit odd. So out with a bit of white wax and that just blends it all in with the rest. Make sure you've cleaned it all off afterwards because otherwise it'll keep rubbing on your fingers and getting everywhere and making a terrible mess. Well, obviously not all of it, otherwise it's not point to put it on. But you know what I mean, the excess. Remove the excess. Now I want to tear some strips, so mm, this is a very interesting bit, very tatty. So my first strip, I'm going to tear right the way down, taking all the scruffy edges off. I want quite a thickness, I think, above there. Oh, go on then, I'll measure it. I'm so conscientious, sort of. Inch and a half. <laughs> there we go. For people who like to measure, it's inch and a half. The reason I want a fairly studgy amount is we're going to use it to look like cotton. So as you can see, you do need a lot. If you put a really thin piece in, well, you could put a few pieces in if it was thin, but you're not going to get the look, which is what I'm going for, like that. So just in and out and in and out. And if you want to, you can shake it all about, but that is not necessary. Tie the back. And then I'm just going to pop a little blob of hot glue on just to stop it untying. And I'm going to tear a thin a bit. Make a tulu bow. Gosh, that rain. I started this video in the morning. It's now the afternoon. I'm still working on it and it's still raining. This is a very wet July this year. I'm not going to be hanging this up, so I'm going to cover that hanging hole there with this bow. Little blob of hot glue. On it goes. Then free the ends a little bit. Make them look a bit tatty. I'm going to glue this so that it covers the little hole there. You can see it there. But I'm not just going to put it straight. I'm going to give it a little bit of a push. So I put my glue over the hole so my nose definitely covering that. And then lift the little tail a little bit. It gives you a sort of sumptuous look. Look at that. <laughs> oh, me and my glue gun. The stories it could tell. Same again. Little bit of a fluffy, sticky up bit. Like that and then sort your bow out at the top. Make sure you're happy with it. And that, you could put this on a little tiered tray. You could put it as part of a display. This will be going up just as part of my display. And I think it's lovely. What do you think? Do you think that's brightened it up and made it look much more country style, much more farmhouse cottage? I like it. got this mason jar i think it was actually from a cup nowadays they make these cups with straws in or glasses so i'm going to use that to make a lovely little decoration so i've got this bit of sleeve left I'll tear it snip and tear the bottom decide how tall i want this to be so put my jar on and i want it covered in the middle section to about there so and I'm going to pull some bits off the end, but I'm not going to really do a deep ruffle or fringe. I just want it to look a little bit shabby chic. And then we're going to cover the jar with this. Now I've got this piece of drop cloth and a stamp. I'm going to take my brown ink. This is a 
Devcraft premium pigment ink pad. I always find it easier to take the ink pad to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink pad. You can see what you're doing. Press this firmly into the center. Well, hopefully it's the center. It's near enough. And now I'm gonna tear this, come away a little bit, about there. Tear, and then I'm going to glue this onto the front of the jar. And now we need to put a little floral display in there. If you've got a bit of a saggy top like this one, Move it all round to the back, pop a bit of hot glue, and you can tighten it up. I got this from a Brocant over in France. There was a lady who'd been married and she was selling off, oh, 20 or 30 of these. I bought quite a few. They were 50 cents each, which is about 50p. I'm hoping to save some time. Yep. If I just put that in like that, I've got myself a lovely country display of flowers. Now you can take them out and actually arrange them the way you'd like them arranged. You don't have to use false flowers. You can pop down your garden and you can find some bits and pieces there. There's always bits of foliage you can pick up from somewhere. You may even find you've got some wildflowers growing in your lawn if you've left it for a while. That can happen. You may have some lovely things in there. Let's see what grows. So let's see what this looks like up on the display. thinking what on earth is she up to now <laughs> i've got this piece of tacky card it's actually a shelf edger from a shop and if you turn this into a cone it should be edge a little bit straighter it's easier to deal with try to get a point at the top as much as you can and then some hot glue right down the seam and i've got a huge cone i don't want all that so i'm going to chop some away so that's my cone Make sure it stands level and be careful because you think, oh, that's pretty level. And then you turn it around 90 degrees and it's wonky. So just double check your comb. Now I'm going to use these strips of curtain lining that I used for making other things and I haven't used them all. I'm going to put them over this tree to cover it. your favorite side of your tree and I think that is go to the back of it a little bit of hot glue I'm using a strip of this green to go around and I'm going to twist it and put it on like a garland make yourself lots of little tiny tulip bows well you don't want them too tiny you want to be able to see them and the, how many you make all depends on how much fabric you've got so there's the front of my tree and i'm just going to dot them as if they're on the garland in a random fashion which is as i always say extremely difficult i've never yet got the hang of random it never quite looks random you can do the back as well if you've got enough. If you haven't got enough bows, don't worry about doing the back. So, yep, that's random enough for me. I've got a spare bow. I've got this for the top. And it's like wood with a little metal piece on. It came off a garland. And I'm thinking of putting that on the top there. It'll hide the hole. And I've got an idea for the bottom. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to take a strip of this fabric, tie a knot in it, cut this end into a point, Poke it from the front to the back and leave the little knot there. A little bit of glue on the back. Just snip it off. Covers the hole in a nice way. I like that. And now we need something at the top of our tree and it's not Christmas so we don't want to put a star so we're going to put a lovely country style heart. And on it goes. 
Oh, look at that. I just love that. You can finish it off with some lace around the bottom if you want to. You haven't got to. I think it's nice. Just left rustic like that. Right, let's see what this looks like. Up on my display. and I've still got all this fabric left which I'm pleased with I could have carried on making things but I want to use some of this in a scrappy quilt so I'm hanging on to all these little bits some bits there's not a lot you can do with them they're just the little bits of sewn edges but you can add them to a shabby bow so I'll be hanging on to those minus the tag and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy using the remains of this what else would you have made there we go if I put this there we've got this one sleeve left what would you make with that sleeve I'd love to know let us know in the comments below and we can all have a look and see what ideas you've come up with thank you ever so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe before you leave because there are lots more videos coming out for the rest of the year and beyond I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget happy crafting and have fun Bye!